Well, good morning, everybody. I uh, I apologize. I'm a little uh, a little froggy this morning, so I'll try to be as uh, clear as possible. But I think the crud is going around, so uh, we'll do the best we can. I am Representative Pat Hamack, proudly serving Florida's third congressional district. I am also the chairwoman of the Women's Caucus, and as we bring October to a close, we would not uh, be doing justice to all of the incredible uh, fighters and survivors across this country who did not recognize that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, we know during COVID that so many important preventative screenings were put off canceled, postponed, kicked down the road, and for two years during times where we could critically catch cancer early, women were instead pushing those appointments off. And now, because of the backlog, so many women are still waiting. And so it is our job today to not only bring awareness, but to encourage women everywhere to please go get screened. Do your annual exams. More than 240,000 cases of breast cancer are diagnosed every single year in women. It accounts for about one in three of all new female cancers every single year. The average risk of a woman in the United States developing breast cancer sometime in her lifetime, which we are seeing earlier and earlier, younger and younger, it's about 13% or one in eight. It is the second leading cause of cancer death in women. The importance of screening is critical, and each one of us here today are tributes to our friends, our loved ones, our family members who have fought, and some that have survived, and unfortunately some who have not. This is critical. And I know that given all the things happening in the world, there is a lot of urgency. But as we all know, sometimes urgency can no longer crowd out the important. So I'm proud to stand here with so many amazing women, not just as Republicans and Democrats, but as American women locked arms to fight this awful, awful disease. And wouldn't you know it, we got one dude. So, now we got two. Oh, two. There's two. You snuck up behind me, Jared. We have two great men who are standing with us as we fight to bring awareness to this issue, as we fight for our survivors, for more R&D as we look to combat this disease, and I couldn't be more proud. So thank you to all of my colleagues who are with me here today to bring awareness to this very, very important and urgent issue. At this time, I would like to invite uh, my co-chair, Representative Sykes, and uh, I have a little great outfit. I feel like I fell out on the job today. Thank you so much. knows no political, economic, and geographical boundaries, and it doesn't care if you are a Republican or a Democrat, if you're from a red state or a blue state or a purple state. Uh, that's why it's so important for all of us to work together to find a bipartisan path forward to address the needs of patients, families, regardless of their political differences. At the core, ending breast cancer requires making sure everyone has access to quality, affordable care at the right time and at the right place. As a lawmaker and someone with a public health background, I know how important it is to uh, get involved and have early screenings. And particularly, uh, this is a concern to me as a black woman. 
while black women have a much lower incidence of breast cancer, black women are more than 40% more likely to die from breast cancer than our white counterparts. And these incredible obstacles that prevent us from getting the screening and the, pre the preventative care and the treatment are abysmal, startling, and just plain right wrong. We know that closing the gaps into care and increasing access to quality affordable care, uh, affordable prevention, early detection, and treatment options, all of these things can help ensure that people, their patients and families are protected, and most importantly, we are saving lives. I am proud to co-sponsor critical legislation like the Nancy Gardner Sewell Multi-Cancer Early Detection Screening Coverage Act, which has been introduced by our own Terry, Terry Sewell in, in honor of her mother, would increase access to multi-cancer screenings tests through the Medicare program. This vital legislation would help improve our ability to treat and prevent cancer, saving the lives of millions of cancer patients across the country. But this is only the beginning. I am confident in the women and men behind me in this chamber, in the United States Congress, in ensuring that we are protecting the lives of those who are affected by cancer. And if I can say and emphasize Kat's words, uh, Representative Kamek's words, it is early detection saves lives. If you have put off a screening, please use this as a reminder that you should get screened. Contact your local health health care providers immediately to make sure that you're doing what you can to protect yourself and catching any uh, signs of cancers before it extends and grows to something that becomes much more deadly and uncontrollable. So I am uh, grateful to be with you all today, and I am excited to hand off the podium to my good friend from Texas, Monica De La Cruz. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm Congresswoman Monica Dela Cruz, representing the 15th Congressional District in the great state of Texas. Today, I could not be more honored to be here in front of you, here with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle. And I say that today because one of my very best friends, Rosie, suffered from uh, breast cancer had a double mastectomy, and is today having surgery due to that surgery. So my heart, my prayers, and my thoughts are with my very best friend. And today, it is so meaningful for me to stand up here with my colleagues to show that this is not a red issue, it's not a blue issue. This is a red, white, and blue issue for all American women. And it is important for us to come together and support each other in this cause for bringing awareness, supporting research and diagnosis, and supporting the families of those women who are suffering from breast cancer. Because it's not only the patient, but it's the husbands, it's the children, it's the friends, that all are there supporting the brave women going through their cancer treatment. But we have good news that God is with us and there are so many beautiful women like my dear friend Rosie who has survived breast cancer and who can survive breast cancer, especially with early detection. And so today, it makes me so proud that after a month of a soap opera, a telenovela that we've had at the Capitol, that we stand together for something that is important, and that is bringing awareness during this month for breast cancer. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you to my colleagues who came today on this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, day to talk about this important topic. And with that being said, I'd like to turn the microphone over to Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Thank you. Thank you and good morning to all of the press that's shown up here today. I am so pleased to see you all here covering this very important event. But more than that, I'd like to thank uh, Congresswoman Kat Kamek and Monica De La Cruz for the leadership that they've provided for us to have this press conference today and all of the work that they're doing. And this is especially important 
because this month we're highlighting breast cancer. We are women who not only care about ourselves, but we care about all women. And we want to make sure that we share the information and that we give the support that is needed for all women to understand how their lives can be saved. I have three friends that fall into three different categories. I have one friend who is taking chemotherapy right now, who discovered a little bit late. We're very hopeful uh, that it's gonna turn out okay. I have another friend that died uh, because she did not have early detection. And I have a young friend who discovered a lump on her honeymoon. And so this is going to be early detection for her uh, in self-discovery. And I know uh, that she's going to be fine. But I want you to know too many women are dying that did not have to die uh, because they did not understand the importance of early detection. Too many women of color in particular are dying because they did not understand and take advantage of the opportunities uh, to have early detection. I believe uh, that we can fight cancer. We've invested a lot. We're gonna to continue to invest a lot uh, from the public policy standpoint. We're gonna to continue to give support. We're gonna to continue to give outreach. We are doing this because we care so very much about all women. And am I proud to be here today in this cooperation in the Women's Caucus that is bipartisan. We are not worried about which party we belong to today. And I know sometimes we're running and raving about public policy, but uh-uh, not on this issue. We're together, Democratic women, Republican women, working together to give information that we know will save lives. And so I'm absolutely committed to the proposition that we can save lives. And I want all of the women within earshot to understand that we can be very important in the discovery of lumps. Self-examination still works. I want women not only uh, to do that in the shower whenever they have the opportunity to, but also get your checkups from your doctors and make sure that you're getting the screenings that are necessary. We are committed to doing this. And when you see the Democratic women and the Republican women working together, you know we must be very serious about this issue. And so I was here today, not only because I was committed, but I reached out to other women in the Democratic caucus and said, please join, please be there. We all need to be represented. And while I was running a little bit late today, in my high heels, I kept running so that I could get here and share this information with all of you. So do us good, give us real coverage, make it the front pages, do everything that you can to ensure that the education and the information gets out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Waters. Now I'd like to uh, welcome a great friend and doctor, Representative Miller Meeks or 3M as we call her. <laughs> thank you uh, so much, Kat. Uh, thank you and uh, Representative Dela Cruz for organizing this. And I'm gonna speak both as a nurse, as a doctor, a former director of public health where uh, breast cancer and screening failed. And then also, the um, I had an aunt and my sister uh, uh, died of breast cancer. So three things. And we've passed legislation on all three of these things. On Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we wanna make sure that women know that there is prevention, that there is treatment, and that there is recovery. So prevention, whether it's self-breast exams, visiting with your provider, mammograms or 3D mammograms, changing the age as we've done with veteran women in toxic exposure so that they can get mammograms at an earlier age. All of that is part of preventing breast cancer and adding to that the new medicine, new science, and that is on genetic testing. So the availability of those things and the new genetic testing, uh, new factors that you can test in the blood to detect cancer at a much earlier rate. Treatment. We know that treatment has vastly changed from the time when I was a nurse, when we did complete mastectomies, to the time now where we do small 
uh, nodule removal, leaving the breast, to radiation, to chemotherapy, to individually treated chemotherapy and infusion. All of our, um, the portfolio that we have to treat breast cancer is dramatically changed and has led to the uh, increased lives of women. And that includes genetic testing as well. And then third is recovery. And we don't talk about recovery a lot, but I think Representative De La Cruz mentioned that with support for families. But more than that, it's breast reconstruction so a woman can feel whole again, or the type of device if they don't want to have a breast reconstruction and improve devices. We have legislation on all of those issues. So we want women to know that we are here to advance their awareness and let them know that there is prevention, there is treatment, and there is recovery. Thank you so much. I'm going to yield now to Representative Schakowsky from Illinois. I am so honored to be here with this bipartisan group of women and men who support um, the, uh, the, this, this um, important cause. So I want to talk to you about dense breasts. Dense breasts. Right now in the United States of America, 43,000 women die each year from breast cancer. And many of them, it's just been undiagnosed or misdiagnosed. And it turns out that 71% of the women who die, uh, no, who, who are diagnosed with breast cancer, have something called dense breasts. So early detection is very, very important, but it doesn't always catch if you have a mammogram a uh, regular mammogram doesn't always catch dense breasts. This is not something that if you do your own breast examination that you ne necessarily feel, but about half of women have dense breasts and 71% um, of the women, as I said, who are diagnosed have dense breasts. So early detection is very, very important. So we have to pass the legislation that we're all here about. But I also want to mention that we have a, a, a bill um, called Find It Early that says that women who need to be diagnosed to see if they have dense breasts, when you find out that you have dense breasts and you need a different kind of examination, it can cost up to $800 to be able to get that examination. In other words, a mammogram can be free, but the other diagnostic techniques can cost up to $800. And many women say, forget it. I'm not going to do it. I can't afford it. So our uh, uh, additional legislation, the Find It Early Act, would say that any kind of diagnostic diagnostic testing for breast cancer has to be free of charge. So let us pass the legislation to, cost, to make sure that we have early diagnosis, and let's also make sure that we pass legislation, the Find It Early bill, to make sure that women, the, mo the almost half the women in the country that have dense breasts, get the kind of attention that they need and the diagnosis that they need for free. So we stand here on behalf of women. We stand here in a bipartisan way. Our um, wonderful um, men colleagues have joined with us and we can get this done. We have to get this done. So many women dying of breast cancer um, in the United States of America. Shame on us when we can do something about it. That's why we are here. Thank you so much. Good morning, I'm Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I represent Florida's 25th Congressional District and at 41 years old, just after I had my first mammogram, I was doing a routine self-exam in the shower and I found a lump. Since my mammogram had come back clean with no evidence of cancer, I thought, this couldn't possibly be breast cancer, but it, it turned out that it was. I subsequently found out 
that I was the carrier of the BRCA2 genetic mutation, which as an Ashkenazi Jewish woman made me five times more likely throughout my lifetime to get breast cancer and had between a 40 and 85% chance of getting ovarian cancer in my lifetime. I tell you this story briefly because we are all here united together to say that early detection is the key to survival. I honestly would not be standing in front of you today, potentially, had I not been aware enough to do a self-exam to know what was normal for me so I knew when something felt different. Early screening, making sure that you do self-exam, that young women are familiar with their breasts and what they normally feel like so that they have a chance to be able to detect it early. I passed legislation into law called the Early Act, the Education and Awareness Requires Learning Young Act that has appropriated over time $40 million towards educating and raising awareness in young women because so often they are dismissive of you know, their own health. They think that they're invincible. Doctors, when women, young women come in with a problem, um, send them home and say, oh, you know, it's probably just a cyst or young women perceive that young women don't get breast cancer. Even the United States Preventative Services Task Force, which all of us have fought against in order to try to preserve the ability of women between 40 and 50 to begin their mammography screening, still, even though they have made a change recently, suggests that women who are 40 don't need to get a mammogram every year. They do. As do and experts in cancer and radiology say that consistently. It's why in the law, in a bipartisan way, we prohibited the implementation of that legislation. I've sponsored the Reducing Hereditary, Hereditary Cancer Act. Many of the women behind me have, uh, and men, are co-sponsors. Medicare actually only allows for a genetic test for someone in Medicare, when it, even if they have immediate family, who, like, like mine did, who have a genetic mutation, uh, to, to, they can only time they can get a genetic test is if they already have breast cancer. Newsflash, breast cancer, and any cancer is more expensive to treat than simply allowing someone to get a genetic test when they have an immediate family member uh, and, and be able to avoid getting cancer or catching it early. That's the key message that we have. Thank you so much. We're here in solidarity during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we have so much comprehensive effort to eradicate cancer. And I, as, as a survivor with many of my sister survivors and, uh, and, and those that love us, uh, we appreciate the effort so much. Thank you. Good morning. I am Congresswoman Jennifer McClellan from Virginia's 4th District. And as the newest member of Congress and the first black woman elected from Virginia, I am keenly aware, as you have heard, that black women are more likely to die uh, from breast cancer and are more likely to be diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer which is an aggressive form of the disease that does not have targeted therapies. And that is why we stand here today united to say how important early detection is and how important uh, mammograms and early screenings are. So important that I have my mammogram scheduled for tomorrow morning. And I'm very glad that we are able to go home tomorrow because as you heard, with the backlog, getting those screenings scheduled is very difficult. You've heard about a lot of the legislation that has already been introduced that we are supporting. I'll quickly name two more before turning it over to my next colleague. And that is uh, the Screen for Cancer Act uh, to reauthorize the National Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program to provide cancer screenings and diagnostic services to uninsured, underinsured, and low-income Americans who do not qualify for Medicaid I'm also proud to co-sponsor the Metastatic Breast Cancer uh, Access to Care Act to cut bureaucratic red tape and ensure that men and women suffering from metastatic breast cancer, because it's important to note men can get breast cancer too, but this bill will ensure they can access the services and treatments that they need without having to wait for their Social Security disability insurance or Medicare benefits to kick in, because bureaucratic red tape insurance companies should not stand in the way of you getting your screening or your treatment. We need to do all that we can to ensure early detection, early treatment, and as someone who is very proud to represent the Massey Cancer Center, which is doing amazing things uh, in cancer detection and treatment, we must ensure that we have sufficient funding for research and development 
to to address cancer once and for all. With that, I would like to turn it over to my colleague, Frederica Wilson of Florida. Thank you so much for coming. I cannot emphasize how important it is for us to be standing here today. And even though we have gone through a lot of partisan bickering in the past few months, for all of these women and men to come together on this important issue is wonderful. I cannot think of anything more important happening in Congress today than what is happening at this press conference. So thank you. And I also want you to be aware, and I want to emphasize, while breast cancer predominantly affects women, any gender, including trans, non-binary folks, and men can also suffer from breast or chest cancer. They are all equally part of our fight against breast cancer. I've met many of them, and I'm so proud that our president, President Biden, has put cancer at the top of his agenda. And in Congress, we remain united, Republicans and Democrats, in supporting legislative efforts to support those affected by breast cancer. Only together, only together, can we break down the barriers to access and ensure that every person has the opportunity to receive this critical care. Let's stand together. Let's continue to fight. Let's continue to fight against breast cancer because to, together there is nothing we cannot achieve. Thank you. Well, I first wanna thank all of my colleagues who have joined me here today, including Two of our fellows, uh, Representative Langworthy and Representative Moskowitz, it really is a bipartisan issue. And I just cannot thank you enough for being here to cover this. This truly is an epidemic that we need to confront head on. This is not a Republican issue. It is not a Democrat issue. This is an American issue. It is a woman's issue. And we are united in the fight against breast cancer. And again, thank you all so much for being here. We're happy to entertain any questions about the legislation that uh, so many of my colleagues have undertaken. If you have any questions, we'll happy, be happy to take them now. Seeing none, we will get out of the sun and get back to work. So thank you all so much.